And now, O oh face ladies, give me your biggest chorus of. <gasps> oh my god! Oh. Oh. Blue Beetle is such an embarrassment of a superhero movie. Do we even dare call it that? That it reminds you of your worst dating experience. For example, you're walking down the street, you've got the female version of Jabba the Hutt beside you, and across the road are your mates with some beautiful honeys in tow. One of them shouts out to you, Oi, Jace, is that your bird? And I turn around and say, No, she's just a friend. She's just a friend. And of course, what movie about Latin representation isn't complete without a contribution from Mr. Robot himself, Matt Ramos. I don't even know where to begin with, hashtag Blue Beetle. This is a movie the world needs right now. A heartfelt story about family, community, <laughs> and living up to your purpose. The action, the score, the performances, all of it amazing. The film is unapologetically Latino. Well, that's a bloody true fact, actually. I've never felt so represented by one of these movies like this. Being in LA, away from my family while they're in Miami, is very hard for me. But this film brought me right back to them with the Reyes family. Every member is treated with the same amount of love and respect as our ancestors, Jamie, Zolo Mari Duena had the weight of the world on his shoulders, and yet he delivered such a genuine, soulful performance, as did the rest of the cast. I love this film, and I could go on and on, as you usually do, Matt, as to why it's so special. Enjoy it this weekend. And it's failing box office, Mr. Ramos. <laughs> Are you making fun of me? <laughs> the following program contains naughty bits. But before each naughty bit comes on the screen, you'll hear this warning sound. And now, Thames Television brings you the program that's bigger than this. More daring than this. Hotter than this. And more exciting than this. Yes, friends, Thames Television brings you the test card. So, my cabrons, I watched Blue Beetle today in the comfort of my own home. Thank you once again, you wonderful country of India. Because honestly, I cannot imagine a bigger insult to my wallet than paying £17 over the counter at Cineworld to watch this movie, which made me cringe from start to finish. Now, Zolo Madueria, who plays Miguel in Cobra Kai, he's good in the film, but in that series, he plays a Mexican, and here he plays another Mexican. So, not much of a progression in terms of Zolo's acting range, although he does bring the Cobra Kai rage when he needs to in this film. And honestly, I am familiar with the character somewhat back in the late 80s when a friend of mine uh, was telling me about his exploits uh, with Booster Gold in the DC glory days of their comics. But this version just seems to be a, well, I don't know, a bit of a puss really. Zolo plays Jamie Riaz just a generic name like John Smith. And we know that he's got two degrees uh, as opposed to three degrees because then, you know, you could just do, when will I see you again? But apart from that, he comes back home to find that he's going to lose his home because his parentals are behind with the rent and they're being turfed out after so many years. And of course, what do we get? The usual stereotypes that Hollywood likes to perpetuate because what I should have mentioned at the beginning of this video, Zack Snyder, a once great director, now turned to the woke side 
took his offspring to watch Blue Beetle a few weeks ago. Why? Because, wait for it, representation matters. <laughs> This is the same Zack Snyder who is directing Rebel Moon, a Star Wars film on Netflix that, wait for it, has the first non-binary character in that franchise. Way to go, Zack. You've actually killed Star Wars now. <laughs> We cut to the Cord Industries, which is basically Stark Industries, but now you've got Susan Sarandon running the joint as the CEO, and her employees are all foreigners. <gasps> How dare you say that? You can't say that F word. I mean, yeah, the Oscars don't have the best foreign film category anymore. It's just the best film overall, because Jackie Chan, when he starred with Pierce Brosnan in The Foreigner, do you think Jackie or Martin Campbell, the movie's director, had a problem with that title? Of course not. But why I draw attention to Susan Sarandon's choice, her, her poor choice as Victoria Cord in the workers she employs. Yes, it's the accurate representation that Mexicans take the lowest menial jobs of cleaning and scrubbing around Cord Industries. And just to reinforce the fact that Vicky Cord is a very bad white CEO, she has some racial tendencies. I think it's time to find a new job, Jaime Reyes. Go. Andale. Which actually made me giggle because I find that stuff pretty funny. In fact, if Hollywood managed to get a big pair of balls again, they might want to embrace what made audiences laugh years and years ago in the comfort of their own home or at the cinema. But I guess this is cuck Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen, and they're too afraid to push that button that might set off a whole new apocalypse of normalcy. How does he become Blue Beetle? It's pretty contrived. So he meets the niece of Cord Industries, Jenny, as played by some Brazilian actress I've never heard of and she presents to him this lunchbox that has the hidden blue scarab beetle that she snitched before from an experimental lab. Of course, Miguel, sorry, Jamie Riaz takes it home to his parents and to his whole Mexicana family. Oh, S.A., what is in the box? You're not going to open it? And of course, open it he does, and yeah, it's the it's the usual superhero stuff you've seen over and over and over and over. And I might want to preface this with a scene involving Riaz and his very overweight sister looking like a Filipino hooker on a Friday night. That's a very random thought. Why on earth would I think that? Because nothing with me, ladies and gentlemen, is ever random without reason. <laughs> like, share and subscribe. This is where I even said it in my trailer reaction because this film just shows that the DC Universe going forward, or should I say going six steps backwards, has no identity of its own. It basically rips off all the Marvel films, the good ones, from many years ago. In fact, if this film was made, say, 15 years ago with Robert Rodriguez as its director, I think it would have been a tremendous movie. I mean, talk, bring some R-rated stuff into it, it would have been awesome. But you get the contrived things like a talking female AI, which Tony Stark, of course, had, and Tom Holland did with the Spider-Man films. But I liked Tom Holland's AI more because she was played or voiced by Jennifer Connelly, who sadly now has announced that she's had a breast reduction operation so yeah that kind of ruined that one for me but I bet Paul Bettany's not too pleased either so you had this constant talking AI which drives me nuts telling Miguel so it's the female boss but she's like a female girl boss as virtual telling Jamie Riaz what he has to do advising him what's the next situation they've got to deal with it's it really gets on your nerves afterwards as for the baddie of the piece I can't tell you his name he looks like a knockoff version of Danny Trejo, and I'll be mentioning him at the end of this review, uh, but there's just no purpose to him. In fact, when he puts his costume on, he does sound a lot like Iron Munger, played by Jeff Bridges in the first Iron Man, but his whole creation does remind me of Maximilian from the Disney movie that they care not to mention anymore called The Black Hole. If you've never seen that movie, it's absolutely worth the watch, but his whole design did remind me of that robot. It was kind of like a 1979 flashback. Why on earth would I get that, I wonder? The rest of the family unit is pretty much 
what you'd expect. Very stereotypical. Uh, the director, Angel Gomez Soto, I guess that's his name. Whatever, don't care, never heard of him. He went out there on social media to say that Blue Beetle is respecting our ancestors before us. Because, yeah, during the rolling credits of this film, you've got other incarnations of Blue Beetle. You've got these Aztec murals all over the place and i'm just like yeah okay uh what's happening next just can we get on with the plot please what there is of it the thing with jamie riaz you don't even know much about the character there's nothing redeeming about him yeah they even kill his father off later on in the movie again hollywood killing of fathers because you can't have father and son relationships anymore so that was an annoying aspect i didn't really appreciate and also where were all the white people at I probably counted about maybe three white folks in this movie, and, I'm, and that's including the background extras. Oh, and this is really absolutely god-awful moment where Blue Beetle cuts a passenger bus in half, and who sees him and is amazed by him? A Mexican boy. It couldn't be like a little white girl or a little black boy or, or a white boy. It had to be, for some reason, a Latino kid who's like, Oh my god, hombre, you are my hero. <laughs> I will say the uh, Brazilian love interest, Jenny Cord, played by whoever, uh, she's okay, she's fairly pretty, she's lacking the jubblies upstairs, uh, but there is a moment towards the end of the film where she's walking away in hot leather pants, and clearly Jamie Riaz is having a good old gander. I was almost falling off my seat, folks, because that's the first time we had some positive female objectification. Yes, earlier on in the film as well, we do see Zola without his top on, and when he puts his, he zips up his hoodie, you can clearly see that uh, his potential love interest has got the old googly eyes for him, and I'm like, oh, here we go. The most cringiest moment in this film is not George Lopez's line about Batman being a fascist. I mean, that joke fell as flat as Hiroshima did when the atomic bomb went off. But the worst moment, honestly, is the grandma who's brandishing a mechanized version of a Gatlin gun. And she mutters words in Mexican about why she's a badass. I mean, that joke just flew over my head like the red arrows. <laughs> So what are my takeaways about Blue Beetle? First of all, don't watch this ever. If you see it at your local pound shop, pick it up, have a good laugh, and then maybe use it as a coaster afterwards. Susan Sarandon, she's 76. I would still bang that booty even today. She looks better now than she did 20 years ago, which reminds me, I do need to watch White Palace and Bull Durham again. And the third takeaway that I have about this movie if you want to see a celebration of Mexican people, Latinas, Latinos, done in a more tongue-in-cheek way and is unforgiving and unapologetic with this narrative, I highly recommend El Mariachi, Desperado, Machete. And Machete kills because Danny Trejo getting on that motorcycle with a beautiful Jessica Alba behind him because you know they are going home for some serious pounding afterwards. It's one great reason to enjoy that film over and over again. And of course, we had Mel Gibson in the second movie too. So ladies and gentlemen, and your pinadas, and your pinadas, if you enjoyed this video today, make sure you like it, make sure you share it. And if I were you, cambron, and if you were me, you better come back for the next video. Andale, andale. Machete kills. And machete hills again. <laughs> <laughs>